You've tuned into The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications manager, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the city's programs and provides updates on current and upcoming projects. And now your host for The Break Room, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for joining us. The Break Room is a place for us to get together for just a few minutes and take a break from our daily work, catch up with coworkers, and hear about what's happening in and around the city. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Manager for the City of St. Augustine. This week, we're changing things up again. With elections right around the corner, we have invited back to the break room, Vicki Oaks, Supervisor of Elections for St. John's County. Vicki, welcome back. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Melissa. It's last time you were here, you were my first out of City Hall guest talking about our special election. Yeah, about the city charter amendments. That was back in February. Yes, and we've got uh, facing another election. And this one is really like nothing we've ever seen. This was nowhere on the horizon. And it's not even anything to do with our candidates, but more importantly, this pandemic that we've been going through, COVID-19. We're ha- hearing these buzzwords lately of masks are strongly encouraged. Uh, the city of St. Augustine, city of St. Augustine Beach, as well as the county, all have different l- types of ordinances and places for wearing masks indoors. We have social distancing rules, messaging about staying home if you're sick, sanitize your hands. How does this impact voting day or our, our elections this year? Wow. <laughs> That's how it affects it. Right. Well, yeah. And um, so the all of the changes dropped on us uh, March 17th, mm-hmm. which was Election Day, the presidential preference primary. And my all of our worlds have changed. Mm-hmm. So Election Day, we had to kind of deal with what we had. Now we've had some time to do a little planning. So what we've seen is our vote by mail request absolutely skyrocket. We have mailed 50,000 vote-by-mail ballots for this primary election, and that is a record for St. John's County. The most we've ever had is about 38,000, and we get hundreds of requests every day. So a lot of people are making the choice to stay at home and vote by mail. And and under Florida's current law, um, you must request a ballot in order to receive one. Okay. But it's very simple. All you have to do is ask. So it's not going to just come in the mail because I'm a registered voter. I have to call and ask for it. Yes, that's correct. And I'm not a mind reader. I don't know that right. you happen to want one. Right. So you have to request it. And that's part of the safety and security of Florida's vote by mail system that we have, that you have to request a ballot. Okay. All right. So vote by mail ballot requests are way up. And it was a little difficult finding our way through planning the election because the supervisors, all 67 of us, made some requests from Governor DeSantis, requested some um, different things by executive order that Mm -hmm. would allow us to better accommodate our voters during a pandemic. So some of those we have received. And so here's how things have changed in St. John's County and what we have done with early voting. Normally, in a primary election, we have eight days of early voting, and we have six locations. Okay. So we added two additional days, which will have 10 days, and we added two additional locations in the northwest of the county. And what the law requires with our early voting locations is that they be equally spaced out Mm -hmm. throughout the county to allow all registered voters equal access to our early voting sites. Okay. So um, my goal for the general election will be 10 early voting sites. So we did some expansion with early voting, and Election Day pretty much will be as normal. Election Day, August the 18th, 18th right. the polls will be open as normal, all 39 of our polling places from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, that's on Election Day. August 18th. August 18th. But for early voting, the hours are a little bit different. And then tell us a little bit about the health and safety guidelines that have been put in place. 
Okay. Early voting is going on right now in all eight of our locations, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily through the 15th, which Mm -hmm. means you can vote every day up until Saturday. Early voting closes at 6 p.m. August the 15th on Saturday. Okay. So as far as those protections... We have adopted what's called the Voter Election Protection Standards. And we have said, here's some things that we are going to do in an effort to keep our workers, my staff, and our voters safe. And we have face shields, masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes at all of our voting locations. And then we are asking the voters to to take some responsibility in this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because safety is everyone's responsibility. Absolutely. All of our early voting sites are set up for social distancing. And um, we are asking that our voters, uh, when they arrive or before they arrive, to go on our website at votesjc.com. We have some great tools. One of them Mm -hmm. is called My Voter Status. You can click on it. Type in your information, look up your voter record, make sure that you have the correct address. You can even view your um, sample ballot there. I saw that. That's an interesting, I would have never thought about it, but it's kind of like you're giving me the answer to the test, so I should practice my test before I get there. And then once I get there, I can just take my answers that I've already done. I don't have to stand in the booth and think about it or read it through in the booth. Makes it makes it more efficient. Yes, and that's what we're after, efficiency at all of our voting locations. But before we leave the My Voter status, Mm -hmm. if you are a person who votes by mail, um, that is a great tracking. Okay. You can, through that app as well, My Voter Status, track your vote by mail ballot from the time it's requested to the time you it's mailed, received, you vote or return it okay. to our office. You can see the date it's received, and you can even verify that your vote has been counted. Wonderful. Yes, and some of the money that we've received, um, about $291,000 worth of CARES grant from the federal government, mm. um, part of that money I used to repay, pay return postage on our vote-by-mail ballots. Okay. Okay. You're listening to The Break Room. If you've just tuned in, I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Manager for the City of St. Augustine. Today in studio with me, Vicki Oaks, Supervisor of Elections, and we're talking about how the upcoming Election Day is looking a little bit different with COVID, but just the same. A lot of things are remaining the same. Um, getting into the polls, the most important thing you're asking us, Vicki, right now is get those mail-in ballots. They have to be in your office by Election Day. It's not postmarked or anything like that. It's got to be in your hands. Correct. At the elections office, no later than 7 p.m. in order to be counted. And to help with that, right in front of the office, we have a 24-hour drop box. You can drive up and drop your ballot anytime. It has three security cameras on it. Okay. And then at all of our early voting locations... We have red drop boxes that a voter, they're very secure. They have padlock seals, chain, a bucket of concrete on them. They're not going (laughs) anywhere. Voters can walk in and deposit their voted ballot right at the early voting site. Okay, so I can still drop in my mail-in ballot in person, if you will. But I don't have to stand in line. I'm not going in the into the polling station, polling location to stand at the at the kiosk to vote either. Right. So you could just actually have step right in the door. They're mostly right inside the door mm-hmm. and you don't have to get in line. You just drop it in the box and leave. And but those are not twenty four hours. You have to go to those locations for those boxes during the voting hours, but the one at your site at the elections office is a 24-hour drop. Right, because it's outside of the elections office. Okay. Anything anything that you're seeing that people are confused about, um, concerned about? You mentioned that the mail-in ballots requests are up. How is the return coming on those so far? 
Well, we need to be doing better on our return mm-hmm. because we, as of last night, of the 50,000 that we have in the mail, only about 19,000 of them had been voted and returned. That's a okay. very low percentage. Right. So voters, if you're listening out there, please get your ballots into us, either by going ahead and putting them in the mail. Remember, first class mail these days takes three to five business days and you may not, you cannot put your ballot in the mail on Saturday or Monday and expect that it's going to be delivered on Tuesday in order time to be counted and don't mail it on Tuesday. Right. It's in the office. It's not a postmark like our tax return. As long as it's postmarked, it counts, but that's not the case for the voting. It's got to be in the office. Right. Now, just because you've received a vote by mail ballot, that does not preclude you from voting in person. Okay. Um, as long as you have not already returned your voted ballot, you can go in and still early vote up until Saturday at 6 p.m. And then if you still have your ballot and haven't mailed it and you want to go vote in person at your precinct on Election Day, you can do that. In the early elections, I can go to any location. Yes, and that's the great thing about early voting because there is no wrong place to go. On Election Day, you must go to a specific location Location. based on your address. Got you. And when I show up at the polling location, at the voting location, uh, if I don't have a mask and I suddenly think, "Uh uh-oh, I'm not going to get turned away because you have masks to provide. Yes, we do. Now, six of the eight early voting locations are in city or county facilities, Mm -hmm. and the county does have a mask ordinance that is specific to county buildings. Okay. So um, we do have them available, but let me just say emphatically, no voter in St. John's County will be turned away because they are not wearing a mask, period. Right. And, Wonderful. And my uh, workers understand that I'm very emphatic about that. And you've even said from our last time we chatted, we are a no excuse uh, state. For voting by mail. For voting by mail. Yes. So, but in any case, in this case, if you show up, you will not be turned away. If you don't have a mask, they will be available. Yes. And our election day polling places, a lot of them are in churches. Okay. So um, there's no local mask ordinances in churches, but we do have them. Some may have uh, posted, for example, when I go to Publix, they have a, a, a mask policy policy right. on the door. And what I do, put my mask on. If they ask me to, I do, sure. of course. And um, we're not requiring it in those circumstances. But we have them available for anyone that would like to or need one. And for the most part, I think people are getting the message pretty clearly that the masks help. We all want to be safe, healthy, keeping everyone else safe. Election Day is very important. Uh, it, it's everybody's right to have the right to vote. So we are not doing anything that will preclude anyone, like you just said. Everyone has that opportunity, whether it's in person or by mail. General election will be in November. And tell us quickly before we leave, there's still going to be early voting, of course, as always, and it backs into October. Yes, because Election Day is November the 3rd, so that does back it up. So we will have 13 full days of early voting for November. It will begin on October 19th through the 31st. My goal, Melissa, is to have 10 early voting locations spread throughout St. John's County. To We're really trying to provide locations to spread voters out mm-hmm. um, to allow for social distancing as much as possible. When I show up at the voting location, I may have to stand outside, and that's okay. Yes, and um, all the places are marked off. The polling places are set up for social distancing. We have precincts of all different sizes, types, and kinds. So there may be areas like, for example, when you go check in, you're going to be within six feet of a worker. That cannot be avoided. Right. When you receive your ballot, you're going to be within six feet. But then you'll go, you can pick a voting booth where are encouraging social distancing And then um, we're asking you to come prepared, have your um, sample ballot ready, have your ID ready so you can get checked in quickly, mark your ballot quickly, 
um, put in the tabulator and be in and out in an efficient manner. Wonderful. Vicki Oaks, thank you so much for coming and talking with us today about this upcoming election. It's an exciting time, and we'll see what happens. Great. Thanks. As we wrap up another edition of The Break Room, I hope we answered your questions. If we didn't, take a minute and drop an email to info at citystainog.com. We want to keep you informed about what's happening in and around the city, and most importantly, that you hear it here from the people doing the work and making it happen every day. Stay connected with the city. Follow us on any of our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City St. Aug. Until next time. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program about projects and programs offered by the City of St. Augustine. We hope you'll join us each week as host Melissa Whistle and her guests have a conversation that helps you better understand how our city works to meet the needs of our community. See you next time on The Break Room.